Stan Gibalisco here. I'm going to explain a little bit more about my emergency power system for powering my furnace. I talked about that just a few uh, days ago in regards to my book Making Everyday Electronics Work. What you just looked at was my ham radio antenna. What you're looking at now, of course, is my garage door. Well, why would I show you this? Well, this is where I put the generator during uh, power outages. The generator goes underneath that card table, which has been cut down, and then some tarpaulins taped to the sides, hopefully to protect it against rain and other drippings, which will frequently come through that deck, even in the winter. The snow tends to melt on there and drip through there, and the other night we had a severe thunderstorm and lightning struck right nearby. I was working on my computers. It was one of the warmest nights of the year, so I did not need the furnace. However, that lightning strike knocked out the power to just uh, this very close vicinity. It was a very close strike. So I set up my emergency generator without this rain cover. Now, I was under the impression that it was waterproof. Well, it ain't. So now I built this precipitation protection cover. Now the fact that it's relatively sheltered already should keep uh, the rain out of it in case there's high winds going on, although of course, if there's a severe enough storm with winds from the right direction, it'd get underneath even this. Then I'd have to take some further measures. But I learned that lesson when the generator, it ran fine for a couple hours. I ran my computers off of it. But, when I went to restart it again, just out of uh, curiosity, because I wanted to test a few things, wouldn't start. Water had gotten in there, it had gotten into the gas tank, it had gotten into the uh, spark plug. Well, when winter comes, of course, uh, even if the furnace fails and there's a power outage, I've got this. I am prepared up here in the Black Hills of Dakota Territory. If that shelter isn't enough, I figured what I'd do, this is a wall going to the outside, I'd make a little hole with a little pipe, about four inch diameter pipe going through that wall at just the right level so that I could put the exhaust pipe of that generator right into that little four inch pipe and then that generator would really be out of the rain and snow and wind. If it becomes necessary, I will do that. I sure hope that uh, I don't have to find out the hard way. I'm going to test that shelter. It's supposed to be a rainy weekend here coming up. I can test it to see how well it's really going to work. There, <clears throat> you see my laundry machine, which I use uh, twice a year, whether I need to or not. Uh, no real urgency there about the power uh, situation. I can do without that for a few days if I have to. I mean, you know, heck, I only use it every six months. There's the furnace. Now, after that thunderstorm, uh, that nearby lightning strike uh, caused a transient on the power line, which screwed up my cable box, my TV cable box. Fortunately, didn't destroy it, but I had to call the company and have them send a reinitialization command through the cable lines to reset that thing. And then it occurred to me that what the arrangement I had with the isolation switch and everything here was fine for, for keeping the system isolated in case we had a power failure in the winter and I wanted to avoid backfeed. You should always avoid any possibility of backfeed either through the neutral or through the, through the hot wire. It can occur with a floating neutral, by the way. You've got to be very careful. You'd never want to have any chance of that, so you need a double pole, double throw isolation switch. That was up here, up, up here out of sight. I took that off, and instead I put two power strips here. Neither of them have 
had surge suppressors, or also known as transient suppressors, in them. I don't know if you can see them. That light bulb there is plugged into a power strip that would go to the generator. The, the transient suppressor is that thing with those two little green lights, like little green eyes there. That thing wasn't in there when that lightning storm hit. Now this furnace has electronics in it. Well, that isolation switch is just great, but it isn't going to do any good if it's connected to the utility and there's a lightning strike and, and the power uh, surge gets through there, the, the transient gets through there. That little switch right there is no longer in use. That was just a power switch to shut the furnace off. And there was a fuse there. That was not the isolation switch that I had. But I wanted to wire this up so that I could use a transient suppressor right there, which you see on the left. And so now it's connected to the utility power strip, which that little red light, that little red glowing switch, that goes to the utility power. Now if there's a power failure, I will switch off that switch, unplug the transient suppressor and the furnace plug. That three-wire cord there goes to the furnace. We'll unplug that entirely from the utility so I get just as good an isolation as I would get with the isolation switch or transfer switch except better because there's no way I can forget to throw anything um, let's pull that out although a transfer switch uh, I mean it's gonna be going one way or the other if it's the right kind and mine was I had it had had it inspected to be sure that it was the right kind the other way uh, to do that, uh, which would be approved by the National Electric Code, would be this method. You pull that thing out of there, and then there's a plug right up there. I don't know if you can see it very well. It's just to the right of that red switch. It's another power strip that would go to the generator, completely isolated from the utility. And then that light right there comes on when I switch that power strip on. So that light will give me a little bit of ability to see what I'm doing. There's another light up on the ceiling connected also to this generator power strip so I can see what I'm doing. And there's a little switch down there. You should never plug anything with sensitive electronics directly into an outlet or pull it directly from an outlet that's live. You always want to have a switch to turn it on and off, a switch or a breaker as the case may be. You don't want to pull those things out of there particularly because the spark that you'll often get can cause a transient which can itself crash computers and damage sensitive electronics. So now this furnace with its sensitive electronics is protected in the event that we have another lightning event. This furnace was not actually running. I didn't need it. I didn't need the power arrangement for it because it was one of the hottest nights of the year. It wasn't running. But I always run the furnace fan to circulate air throughout the house, whether the furnace runs or not. And so that furnace was plugged in and it was receiving power. And if, it, if there was a severe enough transient, it could damage those sensitive electronics in there and I don't want that to happen. I think I'm going to get one of those little surge, I keep calling it a surge, transient suppressor from Radio Shack. That's where I got this one. It's a good one. It, one green light shows that it's properly grounded. The other green light shows that it's protected, that the transient suppressor is actually working. Get another one of those for my cable box, although I watch cable less frequently even than I do my laundry. Bachelor indeed. And of course, the other night what I was what I did run was the Noid Cave. All of this electronics here in the cave. The ham radio. Computers with big display medium-sized display, another computer showing the stars in the sky where they'd be if it were a clear night, which it is not. It is an overcast day, but what the heck. 
fun to know where they are anyway. There's my bookmarks, which I keep online, my web bookmarks. There's another computer display, the high-end gaming computer that I use to produce some of my other videos. That image is from Great Images in NASA. It's, I use it as wallpaper. Same with this image, Saturn and its moons. There's my ham radio transceiver. You can hear the Morse code coming in, some meters. Ain't that cool looking? Well, that little display is there that shows some of the audio uh, signal coming in. I was busy on this, and by golly, I didn't want to, I didn't want that thunderstorm to be bugging me. Although I have to say, I was not on the ham radio because of the lightning. What you saw at the very beginning there was that uh, antenna. Well, gotta tell you. I didn't want that thing hooked up during a heavy thunderstorm. You talk about getting fried. Not only would the, uh, if lightning were to induce an electromagnetic pulse, producing a current surge, and indeed a current surge in that antenna, huge voltage spike. That's the end of the ham radio bulletin that you were just listening to. I'm sure you enjoyed all that Morse code. I'm sure you got enlightened by that. Now we just hear noise. If lightning were to produce a spike on that, it not only could fry the radio, it could explode the radio. And if I was on the radio and was using it, I could get burned too. I used to, I remember, well, I'll tell that story some other time, where I did operate radios during thunderstorms, and there were literally sparks flying from the back of the radio. But that's for another time, as I said, and that was another time because I was much younger presumably much less intelligent, although one has to wonder. Stan Jibalisco signing off. There's a breadboard I'm doing some projects on, and uh, you might want to get this book, too. Electricity Experiments You Can Do at Home. Pretty safe ones, too. And there's the breadboard for that book. Well, that'll about do it. This uh, video goes with my other book, Making Everyday Electronics Work. What makes it tick? And if you want to learn a little more and get a little more technical, you can get this book, Electricity Experiments You Can Do at Home. Until next time, make sure your, all your sensitive electronics is protected by transient suppressors. For goodness sake, don't call them surge protectors. Surges don't need the protection. Your stuff needs it. So long.